the door. Go shut the door, he told me, and I stopped a second, wondering exactly what he meant. If I'd been wrong to leave it propped open, if drafts were getting in, if shut meant something different, if he had asked before, if door could be a metaphor for our relationship, if we were past the point where shutting doors would help, if door derived from Anglo-Saxon or from French, if I was overthinking this, if he could shut the door himself, if I could wrench it off its hinges if I tried, if we were doomed to die alone. All this and more, I wondered when he told me, shut the door. Hello, my name is Renee Scroy and I'm so pleased to read to you my poem entitled, Weak Cloth. We are made of weak cloth and barely woven fabric sewed, having chosen a design because of texture, jute or silk, having chosen a color, violet, brown or red, for the breadth of cotton held against light, for the depth of denim that soaks up all stains. Weak cloth, never woven, for the strength of weft, for the sounds it makes, when flapped against laundry lines in wind, for threads that stray and those that remain after so many washings. We, these ties we say were cut from, are paper persons, dangled, accordion ribbons, designed not by craft or skill, but by hands, scissors. Thank you so much. Unfound land. When they were old men, they couldn't recall if they had strode that mystery or if another sailor had bragged of walking on the broad backs of cod all the way to the shore of the new found land. Though even Caboto himself might have balked at that word found, his tensed eyes saw nothing you could pin down, only landfall receding into mist and a wild grey sea shape-shifting into translucent islands, learning to crackle and splinter, learning to soften to slob ice and then be washed ashore as lolly turned to slush. A liminal place, a borderland which surfaces and fades in the throats of its own people through words which bob up and hide beneath the tide of standard speech. Sudden, as a wind that stretches cheeks to a screecher, or perhaps in a damp, muggy day, which closes the lips to murmur morsy, or with the force of brittle ice, exploding harsh consonants in throat and mouth. It is a language like distant glim, its words as elusive as a fairy squall, a gust which appears to come from nowhere. A standard speaker is strangered by this tongue, feels as displaced as perhaps Caboto did when he returned to the jewel heart light of Venice, learned to live with palaces and towers, yet in his dreams, still walked a squirming silver bridge of fish, the nearest thing he could find to solid land. For at the carrefours, 
signs and avenues usher us to divergent destinations. We trace thoughts through clouds, neuronal bridges, tethering roads, branching out deltas of serpentine labyrinth loops in the expanding metropolis. In toxic sub-zero dawn, traffic exhales nauseous exhaust. Night shuts its wings and the sun, ethereal egg to the east, fries its way west over easy. On this town awakening like every other town in the world, where this morning we are reborn to ourselves, to our routines of work and family obligations, huddled in our parkas with our coffees, our cigarettes, car radios, and breakfasts on the go revamped into one more time slot. This day we name and carve with our rituals, born again to adaptation. We are words tumbling onto a new page of some half-written book. We coalesce some sort of meaning from the totality of our days, the whirl of them coiling into an ever-strengthening helix surviving winds and blunt force on this tangible terrain. The page is blank and seems benign, with all the tabs open to a thousand yesterdays, the memory of them intruding pop-ups of non-continuous text, claiming attention, stitching upon time's arrow past to present. Continuity to future me on an invisible trajectory through places, faces, events, my life, one story, I weave of the years, these words.